Hey, and welcome back to another video from my Vintage Tech Showcase playlist, the playlist of videos where I showcase older electronic devices, usually and uh, most of the time phones. Uh, however, like in this case, I'll be doing iPods as well and I've done I think one iPod video up to now. I'm not doing these in any order or any form like that. So, so today we are doing the fourth generation Nano. Uh, next I might do uh, the sixth generation Nano or the third generation Touch. There's no order at what, what I, like when I'll do these, um, but still I'll be posting iPod videos as well. So if you like uh, such videos, uh, please hit the subscribe button down below then you will uh, know whenever I upload a new uh, video in this playlist. Uh, also by hitting that bell notification button, you'll be uh, notified by uh, my uploads. Also, uh, before we jump right in, don't forget to leave a like on this video and check out my social media down in the description below. And now let's jump right into this video. So to start things off, let's talk about a bit of history. The fourth generation iPod Nano was released on September 9th of 2008 and uh, went back to the unibody design, which we last saw in the second generation because the third generation had a removable back, uh, which you can separate from the main frame. So the fourth generation was uh, a return to the unibody design. It came in a bunch of colors, which was silver, black, purple like this one, blue, green, yellow, orange, and pink, and of course the product red version as well. And it shipped in two capacities, which is eight gigs and 16 gigs, and this is an eight gig model. Uh, this one actually I got recently my friend gave it to me, it was her iPod, and uh, she gave it to me because uh, she didn't really need it anymore. It kind of still ho kind of still holds battery quite well as well here in 2021. And like I said earlier, this thing was the successor to the third generation and it brought back the unibody design. It also brought some new features, which the third generation and the previous generations didn't have, uh, which is a revised interface, which we'll talk about in a bit. Uh, voice recording, so it had a microphone unlike the third generation. Uh, it has shake to shuffle as well, an accelerometer built in. And I think I forgot to mention earlier, uh, apart from coming in eight and 16 gig models, this thing also shipped with a four gig model, but the four gig model was very limited. And I think it was for separate regions. And I don't, um, I cannot confirm, but I don't think it was here in the US, uh, but I cannot confirm that. Uh, I think it was regional, but it did come in a four gig model, which is kind of rare at this point. So before jumping into the rest of the technical specifications, let's have a quick go around of the design and build quality of this device. So up front, we have the display, which we'll talk about in a bit. And then we have the click wheel down here with the color coded uh, uh, selection button to the body, a pretty minimalist looking design. Like I said, this was a redesign from the third generation. It became more taller and more slimmer and went back to the unibody design. Down here, we have the Apple uh, old school 30 pin connector and we have the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack as well. The sides of this thing, as you can see, they are very, very slim. Uh, so uh, this side is also the same. There's obviously nothing on the sides of this device. Uh, up top, we have our lock switch so, uh, so that the click wheel isn't engaged when you're listening to music. So the lock switch uh, is shown to be engaged by a yellow marking, as you can see there, it turns yellow. And when it's disengaged, uh, the uh, area there is white. So that is the lock switch up top. And at the back, we have iPod branding with the Apple logo and the storage branding there as well. And a bunch of other stuff, including the serial number and etc. etc. So that was just a quick go around of the device. And in the in terms of feel in the hand, it has sharp edges. So some people may not like that, but a lot of iPods were like that. Uh, but I really like the design. It's feels obviously very good in the hand. It's polished and painted aluminum. It kind of gets scratched easily. And trust me, repairing this thing is a nightmare. Uh, if you have watched this video, no, that in that video, it's a fifth generation, but the fifth and the fourth are quite identical. Uh, and we'll be covering the fifth in an upcoming video as well. I have a fifth sitting over there. And if you watch that video, uh, the identical design makes it really hard to repair. So when you're trying to pull stuff out, things can break and it's you can easily miss a connector and it's really, really hard because you gotta slide the internals out from the bottom uh, and you can push it from the top as well. So uh, it's kind of a pain in the butt to repair, but uh, in terms of usability, the design is very nice. It's very light. 
and it weighs only 36.8 grams, which is a uh, huge uh, step down from the almost 50 grams on the third generation. So it's definitely considerably more lighter despite being taller than the third generation. The third generation had a stainless steel back, so that's probably what added to the extra weight. This thing is fully aluminum, so uh, that's why uh, the weight has gone down quite a lot. And now let's jump into a bunch of other technical specifications on this thing. Um, firstly, let's talk about the display on this thing. Now, the display on this thing is a two inch display. So uh, it's just a small two inch LCD display um, with a resolution of 320 by 240 pixels. So 320 by 240 or 240 by 320, whichever you want to say, uh, two inches. And um, it gets the job done. I mean, there's nothing major about the display there. It's the average iPod display. Uh, you could watch videos on this thing if you want. This thing has a video playback feature, but uh, it's gonna be hard to watch and it's, uh, it's not ideal, but I mean, you could have done it uh, if you wish. So nothing uh, too much over there. The click view is down here, like I said. Um, now this thing's audio processor, uh, usually uh, Apple stuck to Wolfson with all the other nano models. So Wolfson was their audio, pro audio processor manufacturer. For example, the first, second and third generation used Wolfson audio processors. However, the fourth generation was the first to use a Sirius Logic audio processor. So the audio processor on this thing is a Sirius Logic CS42L58. So CS42L58, which is its audio processor. This thing also has an internal RAM of 32 megabytes. And that is just more than enough for a simple uh, operating system that it needs to run and the games that you can load from the iTunes store. So the RAM at 32 megabytes is just more than enough. Now for battery performance on this thing. So the battery performance was identical to the third generation. However, the video performance was a bit of a downgrade. So the third generation could do 24 hours of straight audio playback and five hours of video playback. Um, but the fourth generation here could do 24 hours of audio playback, but around 4.5 ish hours of video playback. But then again, it depends on um, the brightness and the sounds being played off the video. It's just very, very vague. But uh, the third generation had a slight edge in terms of battery performance over this thing. Uh, obviously, this thing has a bigger display. So I guess the battery gets uh, the battery obviously dies a bit more faster. Uh, but it is what it is. Now we can have a closer look at the operating system and everything in it. So let's go to the main home screen here. So we have music up there. Uh, we can go into there. We have cover flow, which you can access like that. The accelerometer uh, shows you the cover flow. Now the third generation couldn't do this. If you, you had cover flow on the third generation, but uh, it was in this mode and the display on the third generation is uh, a bit like that. So uh, that's fine. You can access cover flow by pressing that as well. Um, so as you can see, these are the music. This is the music on this. Uh, this is not my iPod and I have not uh, I have not wiped it. So uh, my friend's music is still on here. Um, when she gave it to me, I actually have to plug this in, but she actually has some nice music on there. So I might as well just keep it as it is. Um, so you can access CoverFlow by either tilting it kind of vertical there, uh, not not horizontal, not like an, at an angle, but kind of vertical there, or you can just uh, press the cover flow button over there. Uh, the Genius pl uh, Playlist, you have the Auto uh, Genius Playlist over there. We have standard playlist, artists, albums, songs, genres, comp composers, audiobooks, and the search feature as well. Going back uh, to videos, we can uh, see that we have movies, rentals, TV shows, music videos, video playlists, and settings for video. In the video settings, we have TV out, which you can do by putting it into a dock, uh, TV signal, TV screen, fit to screen, alternate audio captions, subtitles, etc., etc. So you have a bunch of features there in terms of video. Then under photos, we have, uh, basically I've not loaded any photos under this thing, neither has the previous owner, but uh, photos is over there. We have podcasts over here, so you can put all your podcasts if you uh, used uh, podcasts back in the day. Then we have extras uh, over here. So under extras is where all the games are. So alarms, calendars, clocks, contacts, and games, notes. You can copy notes onto this thing uh, from iTunes. Uh, screen lock is basically you can set a passcode onto the screen, like a kind of a neat uh, vault looking passcode like thing. Uh, it kind of looks like a vault lock. 
and uh, we have a stopwatch as well so let's go ahead and see what games we have i'm pretty sure uh maze yeah maze is there and vortex is there so i've played vortex a couple of times well the previous owner has played vortex a couple of times on this thing but uh i have played this game before it's kind of like a uh i don't know how to men i don't know how to say this it's kind of like a pinball no i wouldn't say pinball i really don't know what this game is whatever i'll show you how it works um oh yeah you gotta you gotta like the ball has to like bounce around and you kind of like i don't know you gotta basically fill up all like break all those bricks like things uh like that as you can see and there is sound if you plug a pair of headphones into this thing this thing has no built-in speaker the fifth gen had a built-in speaker actually so that's basically how that game works um so let's go back and there's uno mini golf maze and klondike over there um let's go back again we have settings this is where you can see all the details so we have about over there so audio and all the space and everything that this uh ipod has and on that side it's the serial number etc etc basically how many songs and videos and everything is on this uh shuffle uh we can select it on and off you have repeat on and off playback general um this is the basic customization the clicker now i can turn the clicker as you can see so this does have a tiny speaker but it's not a full scale speaker it's more of a uh, clicker so the clicker will work only on the headphones in this setting and uh, we can set it to off as well uh rotate for cover flow the backlight brightness uh whether you can i mean the backlight you can turn it off uh set it to auto auto dim whenever you want uh we have brightness we have font size main menu uh you can organize your main menu you can uh, add and delete what you don't want so if you only listen to music on this thing you can keep only music music menu you can edit that as well the way you want uh, compilations is turned off as you saw there sort contacts based on names or added first so that thing is there as well date and time language legal and reset settings uh so a pretty basic operating system over then oh we have shuffle songs and now playing at the bottom there as well so that is the operating system on the ipod nano uh fourth generation so finally that was the retro style review of the ipod nano fourth generation from 2008 i hope you enjoyed this video and don't forget to stay tuned for the upcoming videos on all my other ipod models uh next i'm pretty sure i'll do the fifth generation ipod nano so stay tuned for that by hitting the subscribe button down below and ringing that bell notification bell so you're notified whenever i upload a new video i do cover a lot of ipod co ipod content on this channel so stay tuned for the upcoming content also don't forget to leave a like on this video if you really liked it and check out my social media down in the description below thumbs up and i'll see you guys on my next video